It looks like there's a new, cheap AM5 Chinese motherboard on the horizon, which may be even better than the Qinyue Night Devil, which we reviewed on the channel as one of the first on the whole internet, pretty much. And uh, I was happy enough that after me, basically everyone reviewed that motherboard. We saw it on Hardware Unboxed. Even Brian from Tech City gave it a look and they were super happy to see that they basically agreed with what I was saying. That was an insanely good motherboard, pretty much best buy because there's nothing you could buy for 100 bucks with that kind of quality. I mean, we're talking about a board which can literally run a stock 9800X 3D fine with a 5090 if you want. So as soon as I saw that Airing made basically a clone of the Night Devil, and knowing how things work over there in China, I figured they probably made, if not in the same factory, just right next to one another. I had to try this out. Now, this one is currently on AliExpress for around 110 to 120 bucks. However, if you are smart with coupons and uh, tokens, and if you know how AliExpress works, you can bring it home for under 100 bucks. And that's where it really hits hard, okay? Because we compared the Chinue one to what most brands have to offer, okay? Asus, Asrock, MSI, Gigabyte, all of them, they're losing in value for money against those motherboards by far. And uh, by the way, little spoiler of the video, they're losing in value for money also because those things come with pre-activated windows. <laughs> okay, so this is pretty crazy, but basically all these motherboards have a, a digital key connected to them. Now, how legit the key is, I don't know, but uh, it works. So why complaining? If you install Windows, it's gonna be automatically activated if you have any one of those. So with that said, let's start reviewing and let's start from the unboxing experience. Now the unboxing here, just like in the other one, is, yeah, not very satisfying. But uh, let's take a second to appreciate the packaging because this box looks really cool. When it arrived in my mail, I was like, yes, let's go. On the inside, you just get a SATA cable and an extra Wi-Fi adapter because you can actually plug a PCIe Wi-Fi adapter to have also Wi-Fi in the Mini ATX motherboard and also Bluetooth. So don't be fooled. These motherboards do not come out of the box with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. They're just Bluetooth and Wi-Fi compatible. They don't have it. However, what you do get is a very good input-output back panel. Not only does it have a clear CMOS button, which is one of the most important features in a motherboard ever. And every time I buy a motherboard for myself, I look for it and nobody has it, and now they put it on a 100 bucks board. So that alone makes me wanna buy this for my personal build. You have a lot of stuff. You have USB-C on board also. You have plenty of USBs, you have a gigabyte LAN, and you literally have more connectivity than in most micro ATX motherboards from any competitor. This has the same IO as a 200 to 250 bucks motherboard from reputable brands. The actual onboard connectivity for the inside of the case, of course, is not the best, but we are still dealing with a mini ATX motherboard. So we have just two fan outputs. We have also the ARGB output, which works quite well, as you can see in the PC right next to me. We have USB-C, USB 3.0, USB 2.0, and audio, and the front panel. We have literally anything which we may want. This also says it's PCIe Gen 5 compatible. And if we go ahead and actually check in CPU-Z in Windows, it actually is. So the slot is Gen 5. Crazy. The NVMe slot, however, is Gen 4. And we have two. We have one on the front with a very cool and actually pretty good heatsink. And one on the back, which is where you should put your storage drive. So a Gen 3 or something doesn't really overheat should go on the back. Everything has its included screws and the screws are pre-screwed into the actual motherboard. I find it quite annoying when you have to go get the little packages and take the screws out from regular premium motherboards. This one is a lot better. So I decided to put it to the test with the best budget CPU out there at the moment, Ryzen 7 7700. And then of course, I also tried it with the 9900X 3D because we wanted to test it out the most. I don't see anyone putting like a 9950X 3D in here, but if you guys want me to try that, I can also do that. So I plugged the CPU in, plugged my RAM in, and everything was working just out of the box. I then went into Windows, installed it again. License is pre-activated, it's pretty cool. And just everything was working. I also tried around five different hits of RAM and all of them were working out of the box. Easy to enable the EXPO. You can also choose between XMP and EXPO profile on the RAM inside the BIOS. And let's now talk about the BIOS. Now the BIOS looks really cool. It has an older date, so it's not updated, but they do actually release constant BIOS updates on the websites, however, 
it's pretty much impossible to get in touch with them. So you're pretty much alone in terms of actual support. What you do get, however, from AliExpress is pretty good warranty. And now this was a point which if I could go back, I would redo in my older video as well. But it's because AliExpress changed a lot. Now this is not sponsored. They don't pay me. They don't even know who I am. Airing, I can't get in touch with them. They won't even send me motherboards. I wanted to pay for motherboards because some cannot be shipped to Italy where I live but it's impossible to talk to them. So, But that's just to say AliExpress is now a lot better, a lot more similar to Amazon, and they offer a pretty solid warranty. I've had a few disputes and I've won them all uh, on hardware. So I'm actually quite happy warranty-wise. I think you can be rest assured it's not like a two-year warranty in a PC shop, but for buying online, it's pretty good. If you get a DOA, dead on arrival motherboard, you can send it back, no problem. So rest assured, do not want to scam you. This is pretty important. But back to the BIOS, it is literally a copy of a standard BIOS. Now, when you open it the first time, it's going to be in Chinese, but uh, if you just press enter, you can put English. So be sure you do that in case you're a bit confused and it's going to be easy work. Now, it's the literal copy of like a Gigabyte BIOS. So it has it all. Uh, it's even honestly better than Gigabytes in terms of quality of BIOS. As far as I can tell, the programmers are very good. The guys that work on these motherboards, they're smart guys, I can tell. And they even get you the overclocking tab where instead of being redundant, like most modern biases, they literally just give you access to the AMD overclocking tab, which is where you should go and where you can actually do some undervolting as well, which I've tried and it's working and it's working well. You should go ahead and enable resizable bar because it's not enabled by default. Be sure you do that. Be sure you undervolt your CPU. For undervolt in your CPU, all my tutorials work on this motherboard as well. It's the same as a regular motherboard. It is a regular motherboard. It's just made from an unknown brand. Now, Airing is actually a known brand uh, if you like to buy, I say, weird motherboards because I've seen them for years, actually, but they weren't making the best products, if I have to be honest. This is the first product of them, which I actually like. But hey, can't judge a product on the company, okay? Just judge the product and the product is very good. Now it supports up to 6,000 megahertz VXMP and it's what you should be aiming at. If you're going with higher speed, you may have issues and you also shouldn't go higher than 64 gigabytes of RAM on this motherboard. You can do it, but you may encounter compatibility issues and I have personally encountered them. So stay around there. It's about what they've tweaked the motherboard for. There's a lot of Again, smart work behind the BIOS, which you can see on this motherboard. And uh, you should just follow the spec that they give you, you're gonna be happy. So any AM5 CPU, Ryzen 7000, Ryzen 9000, and RAM up to 6000 megahertz, which you can then overclock. You can't really tweak the timings as well as on main motherboards. You're gonna just have to enable the EXPO, maybe work on the FCLK a little bit on your CPU, and then just do a proper undervolting. You're gonna be happy. That's how you should run it. And enable resettable bar. Make sure you also do that. So actual tests, how are the VRMs, how are the temperature, how is the CPU performing? So the CPUs are performing at 100%. Actually, they're performing a bit better than regular motherboards, by around 2 or 3%. And it's not benchmark error. This motherboard is faster than, for example, a B650 Gaming Plus from MSI. I tested it side by side. This is slightly faster. It holds the clock a bit better. The power limit is a bit more solid. It doesn't quite throttle as fast. It's done better. Crazy. On a Chinese motherboard, yes, but it's the same as the Qinyuan Night Devil. It's basically the same. Now you may be wondering, okay, but is it overheating while doing so? And the answer is no. I actually took out a thermal imaging camera, very cheap one, and it's running cold. I also tried to touch it with my finger to double check and the VRMs are cold. NVMe heatsink is cold, but because I'm running low power NVMe, so that's not really a test. Board temperature itself is around ambient. We're in Italy, it's pretty hot right now, around 26 degrees Celsius ambient environment. So all these values you see are very, very good. We are seeing the same after running hours of Prime 5 after running stress tests in CPU-Z. And speaking about CPU-Z, if we go ahead and take a look, you can see how the timings are recognized and also how we see the actual Gen 5 on the PCIe and all the info over there. Pretty, pretty cool. And legit, that's the most important part. So the VRMs can handle fine any Ryzen 7 in the market, even an X3D chip. It goes really fast. It's very good to pair with a budget Ryzen 7 7700 from AliExpress. I'm actually going to have a full build 
on the channel, which I think is the new meta build if you want like a workstation and gaming PC pretty much. And overall, it is fully recommended because going on to the conclusions, pretty much the Chinyu and Night Devil went up in price because everyone was recommending it. So Erring saw a gap in the market. They made basically a clone with a different aesthetics, which I also like more, honestly. This is less aggressive than the purple and black Night Devil. They released it for a very good price. And if you leverage what AliExpress gives you, you can buy it for really, really cheap. And I think literally every single one of you should buy it. I honestly tried this out for around a month and it's very good. Crazy to see that an unknown manufacturer is honestly making me happier than known brands. I think known brands need to do better if they want to compete because after the barrier of we don't know who this motherboard is from is surpassed and after people stop getting scared by warranty issues, those things are going to be very popular. I right now want to try a micro ATX size of this from another brand again. So stay tuned for that also. If you watched the video this far, drop a like and subscribe. And most important part of the video, if you guys have one of these or you have a better one or you are having any kind of issues, drop a comment so people can see. And for example, if your motherboard explodes, you can just tell us and I can pin your comment and people can stop buying it. I'm also going to update you guys if you have any kind of issues in the comments. And uh, with that said, see you guys in another video. And thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.